We're Mike and Eve. We're a couple who packed their lives into two backpacks and started their journey around the world in a logistically difficult time. We traveled nearly 5,000 miles to reach the Caribbean island of Curaçao, which lies just above Venezuela. It was a mixture of feelings sitting on the plane. We know what it's like to go on a vacation. It's that excitement that we'll see a new place and that we'll finally rest for a few days. In this case, however, it was more than just a pursuit of rest, with a constant sense of temporariness at the back of our minds. This time, it was supposed to be different. We were going to stay in one place for longer to get a true sense of it all. And so this is how we spent a month on this paradise island. We present to you a list of what we think is worth experiencing while being here for a dozen or so days. As not everyone has the same taste... It tastes nice, but the slimy thing is... <laughs> We will also show you some alternatives. So here is a list of the seven main attractions of the island of Curaçao and their seven alternatives. Number one, spend a day exploring Willemstad. Does the island's capital look familiar and somewhat European to you? Willemstad is called Little Amsterdam. These fabulously colorful buildings are the result of a strong Dutch influence as the island is part of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Legend has it that the various building colors came from an order issued by the governor in the 19th century who kept getting headaches from the strong sunlight reflected off white buildings. The colorfulness of Willemstad delighted us. It wasn't only the houses, but also artistic expressions seen on walls, gates and fences. Local artists, together with the inhabitants of the less well-off Willemstad districts, came up with the idea of beautifying their neighborhood. And this is how a long-term artistic project was born, during which abandoned buildings began to change their faces and the young generation could express themselves through art. While visiting the city, you can even find artists at work. Meet Gail a local artist who changes an ordinary white fence in one of the districts of the capital into a colorful, symbolic painting. So did you start today or was this...? No, no, this is like day five. I did all color today though. Turn and make a nice cute line. So I was black and white yesterday and then today I decided to do all the color. I did not know Paint is acidic. Oh wow, it and does. I went all of my toesies. <gasps> <Jesus. laughs> I did not know. <laughs> now I know. The famous and illuminated Queen Emma Bridge connects two Willemstad districts. What's so special about it? It is a movable pontoon bridge. When you hear sirens, it's a sign that it's about to be impossible to leave the bridge, resulting in pedestrians getting stuck on it for some time whilst it gives way to passing ships. You can spend the morning sipping coffee and watching locals and tourists rush as they leave the bridge. It is also worth visiting the Rift Fort, where in addition to resting in a restaurant or cafe, you can visit the ramparts and admire the view around. To watch a walk through the city, click the link in the description below the video to our second channel. Number one alternative, a day at Captain Goodlife's. If you prefer to experience a bit of adrenaline instead of wandering the streets of the capital and enjoying art, then be sure to spend a day with Captain Goodlife, who's a legend in Curaçao. This is a Mahi Mahi. I mean, for four more kilos, I'll break the world's record in this type of fish. On this side, Juni Obersi established a new record with a kayak. So I did Bonaire, Curaçao, Curaçao, Aruba, kayaking. Crazy. But I did it. Then I went to Holland. And then I came back and just started doing this project. This is when my father passed away in 1991. In 1990, he passed away. He gave, I got a heritage of my father. I got this. Oh, this is the what, what, what I found here. So I transmit it, transform it into what you see today. Oh, and this is my father. This is the legend. That's what, who I'm working for. He's my boss. People love this place. You know, come as a guest, live like a friend. That's all I can say. What an experience to meet this storyteller, businessman and volcano of energy in one person. Some visit this place for water sports, others for his personality. We definitely stayed here because of the latter, although kayaking in the Caribbean Sea was an amazing experience. 
The captain has over the years turned his family wooden house on the beach into a concrete, well-functioning business. It's a place with no clear distinction between the house and the restaurant, as the captain and his family host you in their kitchen and living room. His wife is in charge of the restaurant, while the captain is the main host and chats with all the guests. The captain will provide you with entertainment, meals and drinks. After returning from the kayaks, he served us mahi-mahi steaks and a huge, extremely delicious plate of seafood caught in the surrounding waters Amazing. with his original fries. It was a real feast for our palate. After all, his motto is come as a guest, leave as a friend. Due to the local fame, the captain was visited by many famous people. We both like extraordinary personalities, which is why we felt very comfortable with the captain on the terrace. You know, smiling and dreaming are for free still. Number two, sunbathing on paradise beaches. There are almost 40 beaches in Curacao. Some of them are public beaches and admission is free, whilst others are part of a hotel and can be entered for an additional fee between three and eight dollars, which give you use of sunbeds or palm huts. If you want to feel like a tourist, then Mambo Beach is the place for you. This is one of the beaches most crowded with visitors. Lots of shops, restaurants and beach clubs put everything within easy reach. For some, this is a reason enough not to leave this place during their holidays, especially since the hotel is right by the sea. Blue Bay is famous for its beautiful white sand and crystal clear water. The nearby coral reef creates ideal conditions for snorkeling and the variety of fish that you will not see anywhere else on the island while snorkeling will easily make the $8 expense more than worthwhile. In the western part of the beach, you can also see a few adult iguanas lounging in sun or shade. A bit of luxury, delicious coffee, food and the possibility of renting water equipment complete this place. Let us know if you want to find out how to enter that beach legally and free of charge. Kokomo Beach while still a very clean beach, it's free to enter and the local restaurant offers a great vibe and delicious food. You can take a photo with the word Kokomo by the beach, although you have to be careful for bird droppings. Number 2. Alternative. Local beaches. You can also visit the beaches where the locals go and feel the real Caribbean vibe. These less touristy beaches are located among others in small coves called Boca in the local language and are often far away from high-class hotels. And although they tend to be more rocky, like Caracas by beach, and the sand is not always snow white, here you will find groups of people of all ages who spend their time without phones in their hand enjoying the grilled dishes they tend to prepare on the beach. Be sure to come to the beach early in the morning, since from 10 a.m. the Caribbean heat is in full swing. If you're looking for a more hipster atmosphere, go to Tugboat Beach, where you can see a sunken ship while snorkeling, buy drinks in a cafe and rent diving equipment, or design your own souvenir. There's also Playa Santa Cruz next to the already mentioned Captain Goodlife, as well as several smaller beaches every few kilometers on the west coast. Number three, climbing Mount Christopher. This is the highest point in Curaçao that we couldn't help but climb. The trail is quite a challenge in places, but the view from above compensates for the earlier thrill. The route takes between two and three hours in total and leads through a frequently changing landscape, from a quiet forest path to almost rock climbing. You can start climbing up to 10 a.m. Make sure to take plenty of water and sunscreen. Oh yes, sunscreen was our greatest friend every day. We were at the foot of the mountain at 8 o'clock, but the more sensible folk recommend starting the climb from 6 in the morning. Back, 
The view from the top of this mountain, only 371 meters high, is absolutely worth every drop of sweat you spill. Along the way you can spot many lizards and even geckos. There are also plenty of beautiful singing, colorful birds and you can also come across the carnivorous Kara Kara. So we made it to the top of Christoffel Mountain. The path is described as difficult. It could be difficult physically but also mentally. Um, there seems to be no barriers around so uh, you kind of have to trust yourself. It took us just over an hour. Uh, my GPS is showing me that it's uh, an ascent 246 meters and just over one kilometer distance. Uh, the view is absolutely astounding. It's definitely worth it. And I would highly recommend it. This should definitely be on your list if you're ever in Curacao. Number three alternative, Hato Caves. If the hills are not the best vacation idea for you, then maybe you'll like a cave. Unfortunately, it's impossible to cool down inside of it from the Caribbean heat. It's warm and humid and only a large number of fans make the air move. Its permanent residents, bats, rest at its ceiling during the day and leave the cave just before sunset. Don't worry, they're a vegetarian. Oh, and don't forget to close your mouth as you look up. The guide will tell in a colorful way about the process of creating the caves, the Indians who visited it for drinking water, and the slaves who found refuge after escaping from a nearby plantation. A visit to the caves is history of Curacao in a nutshell. Outside the caves, you can also walk the Indian trail in search of indigenous plants, and animals. There is also a tortoise cage and a cactus garden. Number four, tasting international cuisine. Being an island and the country's colorful history make Curacao's cuisine diverse. The influence of the Dutch Spanish, Chinese and Portuguese is reflected in the dishes served on the island. The availability of ocean fish makes it possible to try fish such as blue marlin, bull shark, barracuda, mahi-mahi, Atlantic sailfish, tuna and grouper. As in every tourist place, you can also eat food in great restaurants and enjoy a cocktail on the beach. And if you're looking for something different, we have for you an alternative. Local cuisine. We were looking for something more authentic and so we went with our hosts to places visited by local residents. Two places worth recommending are Plaza Biao in the center of the capital is an open market most visited by local residents during the week when they don't have time to cook at home. Oil cloth replaces elegant tablecloth and wine is replaced by homemade lemonade. Portions are large, prices are low. That is what I expected. <laughs> Strong proper taste, quality meat. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Love it. So it's a very similar to something that I know very well. Which is? Which is... Bigos. Oh. <laughs> Which is... Fresh cabbage stew with a little bit of meat and bacon, that's what we do. And this tastes very, very similar. You will not experience luxury here, but your palate has a shot at being in heaven. There are six food stands serving local specialties. This is where we first, and probably last, tried the famous okra soup. I like this. It tastes nice. It's a slimy thing. <laughs> A bit of sliced pig's tail mixed with meat, okra and seafood. The taste is very appetizing, but its slime-like texture did not sit well with us and made us yearn for regular chicken soup. Another, this time successful attempt, 
was tasting pumpkin pancakes called arepa di pampuna. These are slightly thicker pancakes with a light vanilla and cinnamon flavor. Perfect for a Sunday breakfast, even if served without syrup or PBJ. Wow, no, that's nice. Mm. So it's deep fried with an oil. Raisins, yeah? Raisins, yes. Since we found out that we do not like pig's tail, tongue or feet, we went to try the local stews. Evelina enjoyed a dish with concomber, although without a pig's tail. Yes, I like it very much and my version is without pig tail. No, I'm not sure what's that. A little, a little, a little bit of pigtail. And I tried carni stoba. The latter stew is usually served with rice, it can be rice with beans and sugar, a simple salad and polenta, which is coarsely ground corn flour boiled with water and salt. A truly hidden culinary treasure is Marche di Barber, a market open only on Sundays, frequented by people after morning mass to taste various local dishes, such as soups or meats as well as homemade pastries and drinks. The place is used by butchers and for selling meat on a daily basis, but on Sundays a local market pops up. We loved this place at first sight for its authenticity and quickly felt at home here. We weren't sure what we wanted, so the vendors generally let us try different soups until I finally opted for beef soup which tasted much like beef stroganoff. And Evelina enjoyed pancakes and local cookies. This culinary journey was completed with a visit to a local snack bar, which serves coconuts and spring rolls, among other things. After drinking coconut water, the seller will be happy to cut the coconut in half so that we can nibble on its flesh. And so that's how we discovered that the coconut flavor we have known so far from cookies and candies is very different from the real one. We are really taken care of here, honestly. Those two? Amazing. Number five, swimming with turtles. One of the amazing things Curacao has to offer is the ability to swim with turtles in their natural habitat. Just go to Piscado Beach, preferably around 8 or 9 a.m., and enjoy the experience with a handful of other enthusiasts. The beach becomes busier from 10 when lots more people come. Between 10 and 11, the fishermen return from their daily fishing trips, clean the fish by the shore and throw leftovers into the sea, which in turn attracts turtles and birds. It's not the most aesthetically pleasing beach and it smells uninviting, but this extraordinary experience of swimming so close to the turtles makes up for it all. You can find a full recording of Swimming with Turtles on our separate YouTube channel under the link below. Number 5. Alternative diving with turtles in a secret location. An alternative to swimming in a tourist place is diving with an instructor in a place known only to select few, where you can see a dozen resting turtles among the coral reef. I visited this place with the local diver Gerard from Dark Centrum van de Ven, to which you can find the link in the description of the video. Due to the fact that it's a very unknown place, and we want to keep it that way, we won't reveal its location. If anyone wants to experience it in tandem with an instructor only, instead of a whole group of divers, reach out to Gerard. Getting a license is also a great way to repeatedly visit various interesting places underwater under the supervision of a specialist, while learning a potentially useful skill for the future. This approach can also be cheaper than diving as a tourist multiple times. Number 6. Shetaboka. Shetaboka is a national park that stretches over six miles. It's located in the northwestern rocky part of the island. The landscape of the national park differs significantly from how one might imagine the Caribbean. The whole eastern coast of the island is a volcanic landscape that forms steep rock walls with remnants of the former coral reef. This area also has a few sandy beaches and is battled by strong winds. Huge waves hitting the underground caves made a great impression on us. Uh, the sound, the sound of all those tons of water hitting uh, the walls all around. Insane, it's like a train hitting something.
Number six, alternative, non-profit organizations. Being in one place for longer allows you to discover the challenges and problems faced by residents. We visited several non-profit organizations, returned to some of them many times during this month, listened, learned, and helped. Sea Turtles Conservation has undertaken the protection of sea turtles and their habitat. Together with a group of volunteers, they monitor the beaches for new nests several times a week, monitor the health of turtles and remove dangerous waste. They also organize days with their sister organization Green Phoenix to clean beaches from plastic that may endanger the health of animals. The collected plastics go to the Green Phoenix sorting plant where they are divided and prepared for export for recycling. We joined them one morning and we couldn't believe the amount of plastic that is found on the beaches that litters the sea of this paradise island. My name is Saitia Comanencia. I'm a member of Sea Turtle Conservation Curaçao. We've done a cleanup on San Pedro, and um, it's a bay on Curaçao where the water comes in. It's frustrating because um, if you do something, you want to see the change. You want to see that it's uh, cleaned up because it's called a cleanup, um, but you don't see it. But on the other hand, everything we picked up today is not ending up in the sea anymore and cannot hurt wildlife um, in the ocean. We can clean up every week, but if the mindset doesn't change, if people keep buying plastics for a barbecue and um, keep using plastic bags to put in their fruits, then this will not end. And the big solution is stopping the plastic producers. You can also visit Rescue Paws Curacao. We strongly suggest you bring a bag of dog food available at any supermarket and then spend time with doggos who need human love while awaiting adoption. Number seven, stay in a luxury hotel. There are beautiful and luxurious hotels on the island right next to sandy beaches. The average price for this type of hotel is between $150 and $250 per night. Direct access to Caribbean water, high quality food and service, and clean beaches at an arm's length justify the high price. If you want to enjoy the five-star life, places worth considering are the series of villas and the Lion's Dive Hotel on Mambo Beach, and the Bayside Boutique Hotel on the Blue Bay Beach, where you will also find a golf course. Number seven, alternative, a flat among locals. An alternative to expensive hotels is to rent an apartment further away from the beach. We plan to stay a month on the island, so we found a small house in the middle of the island where the locals live. As time went on, we had our favorite bakery and got to know some neighbors with whom we said hello each morning. Oh, and you could also be so lucky, as we were, to come across great hosts who will show you a part of the island which you won't find in the guides. Public transport isn't the greatest here. Buses run every hour and sidewalks are a rare sight. Therefore, the best solution is to rent a car. Curaçao Island is not that big and the main places can be reached quickly in the comfort of your own car. If you would like to rent the same place as us, you can reach us on Instagram under Mike and Eve. Let us know in the comments which places you'd like to see in Curaçao. If you found this video interesting or useful, let us know in the comments and hit that like button. Next stop is another Caribbean island, Aruba. Subscribe to be notified when the next video is published.